believe that in the handle of heaven, it will grow you with caution to become more mature. We need to grow up in God's to experience more of the fullness of all that He is. How deep, how great is His love. You need to hear this. The Holy Spirit said this to me while we were worshiping. Don't mistake the Father's pulling you deeper. Remember a couple of Sundays ago we talked about the waves, the billows off your billows are rolling up in it. They're pounding you, causing me. You're caught in the rip current of God. He's pulling you deep, deep is calling him to deep. Now we say we want to go deeper, but when our flesh begins to kick against God's will for our lives, then we have difficulty going deep. Because our flesh. And so sometimes we'll don't mistake the Holy Spirit said this. Don't use the terms of the systems of this world and mistake the things of this world for what I'm doing in your life. You'll try to give it a name. We call it things like depression. God's pulling you deeper. And your flesh doesn't want to go. Your spirit knows you need to. Your spirit knows that if you go, that you begin to see things from a completely different perspective. You'd see it through God's eyes instead of the eyes of the flesh. And that's what he's trying to get us to do. He's trying to get us to see things the way he sees it. We're oppressed. Oh, can the devil do that to Yes, he can. But we who are in Christ Jesus need to get into this place where He's wanting us to go. He, you just sang it. I'll never be the same. The Holy Spirit said, What does that mean? We say that. All the time, I'll never be the same. Never be the same. What does it mean to be the same? Too much flesh, not enough spirit, or just the right balance of flesh and spirit. You have both. You're going to have a positive and negative to make the car start. you got to put both of them together. So Paul finally got a handle on it when he said to us, all things are working together. But God, I don't like that bad stuff. I only want the good stuff. Everything's working together. Even when this stuff comes, you don't understand. Even when the bad comes. Why? Because it's all coming out of the Father's love for you. Nothing can separate you from Him. Sickness, disease, famine, pestilence, wars, rumors of war, nothing can separate you from Him. So it's okay. Deeper. He's calling you deeper. He's calling us deeper. We have to go. We must go. There is, there is not a plan B. There is no other option. You must go be in him. Just go. Don't, don't keep saying no. Don't keep resisting. Just go. Hallelujah. Since we started preaching this, there's some that are resisting. Holy Spirit said this several things. I bet he's been talking to you too. How many has he been talking to? Alright. About five minutes. You ought to let him talk to you. He'll tell you some wonderful things. He said this week, it's wonderful to know that in Jesus he makes all things he makes all things new. His mercies are new every morning. So I want to say what I'm about to say. The Holy Spirit instructed us this week. 
in the context of no one thinking that I would ever use this platform as a bully pulpit to be on somebody else. Scripture says when when we say things that can sting or bite us a little bit, we need to temper them with love. He says, anytime you go to correct someone, you must at first break through about it and consider them better than yourself. Are we all on the same page? We're reading the right scripture. Because he knows that if we don't, we run the risk of being lifted up in pride. That means we love ourselves too much. We instructed you in what we've been teaching you about the depth of prayer is that pride is love turned inward. One loves themselves more. See, we can always give ourselves the spiritual litmus test. Is this pride or is this genuine love? Love flows out to touch, to serve, to bless, to help, to heal. When it becomes all about me, then it's pride. It's love turned into it's actual lust. Because now I consider myself better than you. So I'm saying that because the Holy Spirit instructed us in that when he calls us deeper, there are certain things that he will promise as it relates to what's going on in the body. And I would just offer this to us for our consideration today. And all of us in the body. Peter, can, Peter had, had some real difficulty following Christ and maturing in Christ. He had some real tough times. Scripture records that it's very open. He, he messed up and mouthed off and denied and all kinds of things. All kinds of things. But Jesus continued to love him, continued to minister to him. Never did. I want to tell you this. When God calls you, you want to escape his call. He's already called you. You are the call according to his purpose. And he doesn't repent of it. He hasn't apologized for it. He hasn't thrown in the towel on you. When you say, but I've messed up. I, I'm, such a, I'm such a failure. I'm this or I'm that. God hasn't stopped. People may give up on you. God won't. He just doesn't. He's still in pursuit of you. He's still drawing you to himself. So it's in that context that Jesus comes to Peter and says, Peter, I've observed something about you. And all in the midst of all you've gone through, he says, I'm concerned about you, that the enemy, the devil, the enemy of your soul, has desired to sit you like me. Now, if he could say that to Peter, I think that is applicable to, to the body of Christ, especially to those for whom we are responsible. I, I don't want anybody to wind up tormented in the flames of hell that went from our pews. Are you missing anybody with me? He said, the enemy's desire, he's desiring to. And, and I, I sense that burden in my spirit this morning. It really got in there, Aubrey, when y'all were singing, how deep the Father's love. How deep the Father's love. He's desired to seek you. You get lukewarm, you get real lax in your pursuit of God. Folks, in, in terms of their church attendance, it's hit or miss. You, you can, you, we can look around here. Brother Bud and I, we always we walk out on Sunday morning, we live in the parking lot, and we can tell the folks, we'll say, oh, the lot's full today. 
If the lock's full, the house is full. If it's sparsely populated, it may not be as full. The enemy's desire to sit you. I, I say that in the context of I, I'm not here. This is not about judgment. This is not about condemnation. This is not about indictment. This is about the devil and the father's life. How deep is his life? The enemy's desire to sit you like we, but I'm going to pray for you. I pray for you. I, I do wish, I, I would just exhort you this morning to make that a matter of prayers for your brothers and sisters in the Bible. Pray for those that are struggling in their faith. Pray for those that the enemy has desired to sit like you. And that their pursuit of Jesus and going after the deep things of God isn't the number one priority in my lives. Just pray. We're not here to offer condemnation. We're here to love one another. And we're here to pray that none fall into temptation. None fall into temptation. See, let no one say when he's tempted of God that God did. But every man, when he is tempted and enticed, is drawn away of his own lust. How deep is the Father's love? You see, we're here today because. I, as I see, see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. There, there is so much that the Holy Spirit wants to deposit. And see, you can't get it if you don't come together. I'm not saying the Holy Spirit doesn't teach you, train you, and guide you outside of here, but there are things that we come together as a corporate body comes. How many walk in the peace of the Lord? How many just live there? Pure, good. I didn't realize what I was until I got into worship this morning and the Holy Spirit realized it. Madeline even said to me, I got so laid back this week. I mean, seriously, I just got laid back. She said to me, You're just lazy. What is wrong with you? She was asking me, what is wrong with you? You just, you know, you just want to. I said, it's, I didn't really know. As a matter of fact, I was starting to feel guilty about it. And I would have just got there busting it with everybody else. And the Holy Spirit just gave me the green light and said, you have been busted. I'm going to get you some peace. I want you to get some rest. In the Lord, where you don't worry about it, you don't concern yourself with it, you just settle down and enjoy the blessing of the Lord. I wouldn't try to be lazy, I don't even ask you the question yesterday. She said, Don't you know they're having a work day at the church? I said, Yes, I do. But I just feel a peace about it. And the reason I felt at peace, I said to her, you know what? I trust the people. God's given me oversight to do those things. See, I've been at this since I was born. I don't remember, I don't ever remember a day I've been in the house of God. Since the day I was born. I don't ever remember a time. When I'm on vacation, I go to the house of God. Because God never takes a vacation for me. I just go to receive him. So y'all just pardon me for being a little bit late now. But I, I do sense the burden of the Holy Spirit to go deep. And I just say that for your consideration today. Talk to the Lord about some of our brothers and sisters. Just pray. Ask the Lord. 
ask the Lord to make them strong in the Word, that they'd be strong in the Lord when He gives them the power, that He would lift them up, He would strengthen and encourage them, He would make them, He would make them, He'd make them like the deer that have that spring in their step and hide and see each other, where they could just leap forward. Are you guys, you guys living on? You have things to go, places to go, places to go, people to see. Thank you for, thank you for being here, leading us in worship today. Aren't they wonderful? Aren't they wonderful? Take every shoe and take off. Pastor Steve had to uh, take Sammy to the hospital this morning, so we pray for Sammy and his success, the Lord, for his touch of the him. Yes, that he would strengthen and that he would heal his body and make him strong, make him well. Lord, just honor the covenant that you made with this man. That as he honored his mother and his sister, he covenant and cared for them, and now he will care for him. And grant Susan and Steve the strength and the wisdom to be able to care for him adequately. And that his remaining days would be. Profitable, joyful days, full of the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon his life. We believe that. I really believe that. And so I thank you for his, his restoration, for making him completely well. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We, we pray this way because we want you to pray the word of God. We want you to prosper and be in health as your soul is prospering. That's the word of the Lord. That's the deeper things that the Lord is speaking to us. The deeper. In other things, I go deeper in prayer. Hallelujah. Are the ushers ready? The film ain't ready in preparation. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now, in the next few weeks, uh, as a matter of fact, next Sunday, we will, we will have um, we will have baptismal certificates. And our certificates performed for those of you who desire to be baptized in order to uh, prepare for baptism. We have held up on baptism. We have to prepare to drown on the baptistry. And if we don't believe, we have to have it prepared so we can fill up the pool and proceed. We have to do it. It will probably be in September, right after Labor Day, Sunday after Labor Day. So we're going to try to get it in before the cold weather sets in. We won't baptize in January or February. So it may be a little cold. I have been in the cold water. We don't have a hot water heater in the baptistry area. So you really have to be full of the Holy Spirit to be baptized in January or February. <laughs> so.
So yes, we will get a pass. We're also going to do, we may just take the whole Sunday and do the whole thing. And because uh, as I told you last Sunday, I feel the feet washing coming up. So I feel, I feel like it may be time for us to wash feet and do communion. So we'll, we may just baptize communion, we'll just do it all. And one Sunday, how about that? That works for me. We'll get it all in. And we're also, for those of you who were, uh, we started out in our membership class. We're going to, we're going to begin that again in September, and we will finish this time. So uh, we'll enjoy it. If you are not a member, you come on. Get plugged in, and uh, we'll have we'll have membership uh, forms available for you. When you come into class. They meet. We meet at six o'clock on Sunday evenings for five weeks. There are five sessions. So next Sunday we'll have all that available, and you can start getting ready to go. Next Sunday is also back to school Sunday. Back to school. Can y'all excited? Yes. Back to school. Here we go. It's going to be good. It's going to be a great year. I hear there's excitement in the air. Around this school, there's excitement in the air. Let's bless the offering this morning. Hold that up before the Lord. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we bless you today. We honor you with the first fruits of our increase. We honor you with tithe and offering. We declare to you that you are our Jehovah Jireh. My God supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We do not look to the systems of this world to supply our needs. We look to you, for you are the one who is faithful indeed to meet every need, to supply everything that we do have need of, and we will continue to trust and place our hope in you. We declare today the very word of the Lord that we have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for them. We thank you for your provision, for your promise, and we bless your name today for fulfilling every jot and every tittle of your word. May we, your people, remain obedient. And may we be found trustworthy of the riches of the kingdom of God that you have placed within us and will flow out of us like rivers of living water. I thank you for your blessing upon this house, the people of this house. And we pray the prayer in advance, thanking you for the abundance and the favor and the blessing that rests upon this house. And we are not only witnessing it now, but we are in expectation mode where we will see it double, triple, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Men will give in to the bosom of the work of the Lord that exists in this church. We thank you for it. Honor you. Bless your name. In the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
and the beginning of our worship time this morning, I was going to say, what I said to you about not getting that type of worry and taking the thoughts for tomorrow and how things are going to work out, getting all the press over. It's just the purposes of God. He's at work. So let the Holy Spirit do his job. He just wants you to go to Then he'll take you higher. You go deeper and you can go higher. Listen to that. We don't always get to hear that. I like to hear that sound. Are you going to be still going to sing? Yeah. Hold on to that. Sing, sing good again. Give it to the question possibly. Yeah. Who can you trust? You can't trust them. Elder Raina is going to sing this morning. Straight from the Polk County Jail. Just fishing. Just fishing. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, brother. Yes. Um, I'm not going to do that song. Uh, I'm going to do it. Uh, uh, one. I have a song picked out to sing, and then this dear sister mentioned another song. Do you hear that? Yeah. But we're going to do it anyway. This song is dear to my heart. I love it. We always ask God for things and so we give them back. And, and this song I heard years ago and, and I really love it. And if anyone out there in, in the airways have a soundtrack to this, contact Sunrise Ministry in Lake Florida. I'd sure love to get the music. I just came to talk to you this time And I just came to praise your name this time So many times I've come to you With a great big list of things to do but I just came to thank you, Lord, this time. And remember when you took my sins that time. And remember when you gave me peace within so many times. I could sit here all night reciting times you show your power and might, but I just came to thank you, Lord, this time. And this time I want to say thank you, Lord. For keeping every promise that you gave us in your word. And this time I want to say, I love you 
Superman, God does super things. It's not a blood thing. Amen. We had a, had a, had a blood thing a few months back, so we won't get, get into this. What the word of the Lord has for us today. Let's go. Let's jump into the word. You ready? Ready for some word? Hallelujah. Let's go to Jeremiah 33, verse 3. We'll just start there. Let's read it together. Call to me. Well, I'm not the only one reading. Just together means together. Right? Let's try it together. Ready? Again. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know, do not distinguish and recognize. Have knowledge of and understand. Hallelujah. Now the Lord has challenged us to call. Have you been called? I just wonder, have you been called? You remember a few Sundays ago we said, now if you're going to call, you need to call out of a pure heart. So make sure that you get your heart right with the Lord. And the way to do that. We, we started delving into this a few Sundays ago because last week we talked about the peace of the Lord. But there was this word that just jumped off the page at me and I want to look at Philippians chapter 2 beginning with verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 beginning with verse 12. And you want to hear this word and You'll see why in just a minute. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more 
because I am absent. Work out, cultivate, carry out the goal, and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling. Self-distrust with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidity from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for His good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Do all things without grumbling and fault-finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves that you may show yourselves to be blameless. Everybody say blameless. Blameless. I want you to get that fixed in your mind. That you may show yourselves to be blameless. The reason you're blameless is because you did what was aforementioned. You stopped the grumbling and the whining and the complaining. And blaming somebody else. We've gotten very good in this culture at assigning blame to somebody else because we do not want to accept the responsibility God requires of us. Hello, somebody. It's getting real quiet in here about men. Are you thinking and contemplating this? You may be blameless and guileless, innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world, holding out to it and offering to all men the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may have something of which exultantly to rejoice and glory in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. Hello. Anybody hear that word this morning? Why am I up here preaching and spending energy? Because I'm required, you are required, I just happen to be the one called and given the mandate, the anointing, and the authority of God to expound to you the things that God requires of all of us. You see, I'm not someone that just sits up here on the throne or the pedestal, if you will, and doles out to you the requirements of God and the things that the Lord would have you do. He requires those things of me as well. As a matter of fact, He holds me uh, in, in, to a higher degree of accountability because I'm responsible for your souls. I must tell you the truth. But I'm telling you that, and Paul is saying here, and I echo his sentiments to Sunrise Church, don't let my labor be in vain. When I exhort you, hear the word of the Lord, be blameless, don't let God be telling you now. Well, I heard what you said, but I just don't want to do it. I just don't feel like doing it. Hmm? We just want to whine about it. Your kids ever been that way when you give them an the assignment? Mine were. Mine were that way. I'd give them, I'd give them a sign, we'd give them a sign, and they'd say, Dad, we just don't want to clean those windows today. We're not going to clean up our rooms. And, then they, and then, by the way, Dad, the youth group has something going on, and they bring God and the youth group into it. And the youth group has something going on in that. And I'd say, Well, you're not going until this assignment's completed first. Yeah, you're worse than Hitler. <laughs> they'd come in. They'd try to, you know, I'd say, now, if you want to get that way, you will answer, yes, my Fuhrer. <laughs> <laughs> because if you need me to be, I can be your taskmaster. But I'm going to see to it that you get it done. 
Because you need to understand obedience. And you don't need to let guile and fault finding and things like that be, be in your mouth. Now, today, if you go to either of my daughter's houses, you will find them to be very clean. They know especially when their mother and I are coming, real will tear it up, clean every room of the house. I mean, it's thick and span clean. Well, where'd she get that from? When she was being trained at my house. See? Now, it, now we've got a ways to go with Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> We're still working on him. We're trying to move him. I really had to pray for him because the enemy's really being said. You know, he goes, he's going after God, but when it comes to cleaning up his room, when when his clothes get as high as the bed, we're in trouble. So his mother's trying to teach him to wash. Now the girls we were different when they were all home. But we've kind of, you know, we've kind of given him some latitude. You know, we go through a couple of heart surgeries and get poked and brought with needles and all the stuff he went through up through the time he was five or six years old, you know, we kind of let him slide there. But we're having to work on discipline so that there'll be, he'll be blameless because he's fixing to get on his own. He's fixing to. Probably sooner than he realizes. <laughs> now, we love him. And we've tried to guide him and direct him. And he's done well. They're all doing well. But you've got to continue to stay with him. That's what Paul's saying here. So I want to have something to rejoice in. Don't you rejoice when your kids get it? They finally get it. You don't have to tell them anymore. Do it to pick up, to clean up, to, do, to go after Christ, to go after God. You know, sometimes we have to balance because his mother is beside where she gets on him about his, you know, his cleaning his room and his finance and being disciplined in those areas. And, and, and then I'll come in and say, now, we don't, we don't, he's going after God. He's in the Word. He's praying. He's seeking God. Because he gets up every morning. He's off the breath. I mean, he just does it. He's in the Word. So you've you got to balance it out. But give, give the Lord something that he can rejoice in that you're embracing those things that he's called you to do. All right? So, go on, moving on, we hear Peter say in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. And now, Paul has just said, I want you to be blameless. Don't be whining, don't complain. I want to rejoice. I want to rejoice in you. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will be will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent. <laughs> To be found by him in peace. That's why I preached on peace last week. In peace, without spot, and blameless. Well, what is he saying there? Being saved by grace and being kept by grace does not allow me to live any way I wish to live. Do you hear that? We aren't Christians. Well, God loves me. Well, this isn't sloppy agape time. We don't live any way we want to live. You've been saved by grace. You are kept by grace. See, when I'm saved by grace, I'm falling so deeply in love with Jesus that I cannot live any way I want to live, but I can live the way I ought to live. The way Jesus desires me to live. When I'm saved by grace through faith and the Spirit of Jesus 
lives in me, what happens? David said, I delight in the commandments of the Lord. Do you delight in the word of the Lord? Has, he, has it become your delight to delight in him? The commandments of the Lord and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You need both. The commandments of the Lord, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to have to recognize in my life that with every breath I draw, I'm going to be attacked by the enemy. Peter said he's desired to sit you, but I prayed for him. I'm going to be attacked by the enemy and tempted in three ways. And in those attacks, I'm always being pulled to move away from obedience. You and I are being pulled to move away from obedience toward disobedience. I mean, I understand that's what got the enemy, the devil, removed from heaven. It's what got Adam and Eve removed from the garden. It's what got Jonah in the belly of the whale. It's what caused David to have to forfeit his kingdom. Anybody hearing me preach it this morning? You're being pulled to move away from obedience. See, from the commandments of the Lord, from a delight in Jesus and Jesus alone, that's where you draw your strength. That's where the guidance that the Holy Spirit provides you to move into the deeper things of God. You see, you, you and I must understand we're all tempted in all points as Jesus was tempted. Yet, we see these points and they, here they are. There's three of them. You know them quite well. Let's rehearse them. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, I will say to you very clearly this morning, I've touched on it briefly, but I'm going to go into in more depth today. Lust is always temporary gratification. I want the young people to hear it as well as the adults. Lust is always temporary gratification. It's the description that those who are addicted to drugs, crack, and meth tell us. That the highest high that one can achieve, they tell us, is the first high. And after that, you're always trying to go after the pleasure that the first high brought you. But I want to tell you this morning, and you'll hear your preacher real clearly, young people as well as adults, there is no high like the most high. <laughs> as there is no high apart from Him. If you want an everlasting, eternal, purpose-filled, good time, the Most High God is the place you need to dwell. When you dwell and worship with Him, I'm going to tell you, you can stay in a continual high place. Amen. You can go up to the high places. Don't get caught up in temporary gratification. It will always let you down. It will fail you. It will leave you hanging. It will leave you coming back for more. It will promise you. It will make empty promises that it cannot fulfill. That's what lust of the flesh does. Lust is, all, is always selfish, listen to this, because it is a sick version of love. Lust is always selfish. What does that mean? Young ladies, the young man who tells you that he loves you, he says, I'm in love with you. You have to look into those baby blues of his and determine whether it's love that is prepared to fulfill a covenant promise to you and will stand by that covenant promise or is he in lust with you? And the same may be true of young ladies, young men. Or of adult to adult.
See, we talk to, we, we talk like we're talking down to the young people, like, you know, the adults are exempt from this, but the young people, I want to tell you something, this is a, this is a billion dollar a year industry. Of people going after this stuff. I've already told you. 80% of congregations. The men and the women. Not just the men. The men and the women in the congregation. Struggle. With some kind. Of sexual love. And they gratify it. Tem remember it's temporary gratification. They gratify it. Through some method of the eye date, ear date, or a combination of the two. And then it'll lead to something else. It's a sick version of plus. Last, the pride of life, I said it to you earlier, is love turned inward. It becomes about me. The God of love is always turned outward. It's about letting His love shine through you. Why? Because love has no end. Love is eternal. Love is always selfless. So the great attack against you as a believer today who embrace the love of Jesus is that today's love is turned inward. It's all about me. Why aren't you meeting my need? Why aren't you fulfilling my need? What happens? You become self-centered. You become very sensual. You become ready for self-gratification. Self-centered people start living in less instead of more. That's why 1 John chapter 2, we already write this down, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love or cherish the world. Don't love or cherish the world. Don't love or cherish the world. Why am I asking you to pray for people this week that aren't here today? My concern is, that you'll love, they'll love, and cherish the world. Do I just want them here? Yeah, I want them here. Because this is a place where their soul finds renewal and restoration and refuge and safety. This is that place. It needs to be a priority. Don't love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, Love for the Father is not in him. Now, I didn't say that. That's the word of God. If anybody loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. See, that becomes the litmus test of whether, we, whether or not we really love God. If it's a priority, then I go, I go hang with the people of God. I go where the people of God are. Why? Because I'm here because of my love for God. And my love for God spurns my love for you. Is this making sense to anybody? So don't love the world because it shows you something about love and lust. He's saying here, do not love the systems of the world. What are the systems of the world? The systems of the world are those things that cause us to want what we want, when we want it, the way we want it. And if we don't get it, we'll throw a little tinker tantrum. Remember what we said at the beginning of our teaching today in Philippians 2? You are to live blameless. You're not to be Whining, complaining about your station in life, your lot in life. We, we, could, we couldn't buy designer clothes for our kids. But you know why? Because we weren't going to bankrupt ourselves just so they could have all the ladies. They could be fashionistas. 
You know, they didn't have to have all the purses and the Nike shoes and the Reeboks and you know the the all the latest fashion stuff that, that they're wearing. They we just didn't do it. But guess what? They made it. They survived. They got through. We didn't have to succumb to the systems of the world. What am I saying to you? Young people and parents alike, you you don't have to succumb to the systems of the world. But don't be whining, whining and complaining about it. Just... Don't give in. Stand. Some places, you've just got to say enough is enough. This is it. And stand your ground. Don't argue about it. Don't assign blame. Just stand your ground. And you can do it in a loving, caring way. Take it a little deeper. Don't have the thoughts of this world or the objectives of this world or anything in it. If you go to bed with the world, then you're going to reap. You're going to reap what the world brings. And you'll fall into the trap of the enemy. Remember what, what I just said. If anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in it. Why is that important? Because the love that I'm talking about here, if it's not rooted and grounded in the Father's love, everything else, remember I said His love is eternal, everything else is temporary, and it will pass away. So don't get caught up in that which is temporary. Go after the things that are eternal. Don't look to be temporary, temporarily fulfilled by the lust of the things of this world. Notice what Paul says. We are not permitted to do anything we want to do. Paul said, everything is lawful for me. I can do anything, but everything is not necessary. Oh, that makes a distinction. I can do anything I want to do, but everything is not necessary. Is it necessary? Is it necessary for my spiritual growth? Or is this going to pull me away from obedience and disobedience and get me entangled in some type of lust of the flesh, lust of my eye, or the pride of life? It is not necessary if you see me doing something that is against your conscience. Oh, am I my brother's keeper? What do you think? What does the word say? Oh. But I thought the word says I'm free in Christ and I'm bound by nothing but love and that everything is not necessary for me to get along in life. If you keep eating a steady diet of unhealthy food, pretty soon you're going to become what you eat. As a matter of fact, what you eat is what you will eventually digest. We become what we digest. Because your system has built in God-given properties. They're called enzymes that have a way of breaking down your food so that your body can use it as nutrients that will either help it or harm it. For the diabetic, the diabetic knows that too much sweet is going to drive their sugar out of the safe range. It's going to drive it into the unsafe range. 
So they have to learn moderation. They have to learn that butter pecan ice cream, two scoops and a waffle cone, is not necessary. Right? Maybe one scoop. <laughs> Just go one scoop. And we're okay. But if it's been running 80 to 120 and all of a sudden you wake up the next morning and it's 400, whoa! Hello! The word for it in the scripture is called self control. If you want to get spiritual, it's called soul control. Because God didn't tell us to pound unhealthy things into his temple. Don't you understand your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Did anybody relate to this? I love what Pastor Walter Lager said to our senior class this year from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I believe it was. He said, if you're planning on living a long life, you need to prepare for it. You need to make preparation to live longer. Last week at our General Assembly, I was at a leadership conference. Part of the, the one of our afternoon session was leaders from other denominations that have, from outside of our denomination, taken a look at who we are as a Pentecostal denomination. And are we healthy in terms of our growth in our culture? In other words, when I say healthy, are, are we propagating? Are we putting forth things that, that people are looking at or uh, are, are buying into? Because there are a lot of winds of doctrine that are blowing out there. There are a lot of people who say, this is, this is truth, look at this. This is truth, look at this. And so how we espouse the truth, and in terms of our conduct, because people may or may not be reading the Bible. See, I, I'm, I'm having to begin to pastor differently because when, when, when folks come in here, the reason we have ETS and we start folks out in foundation is because in many churches in our culture today, Sunday school is a thing of the past. That's where we learn the truths of God as infants and little fellows growing up. And we heard those truths based on Bible stories. And we grew up knowing those. And eventually they became the truths by which we live and are living now. Correct? And since we don't have that in our culture anymore, and, and, and baby boomers left, left church in mass exodus because they saw the cynicism and the skepticism of their parents because all it was was, a, was just going through the traditional mindsets and and in the traditions of men, and there was no power there. And so we got we've got the Xers, and now the millennials coming up under us that have no concept of what absolute truth is and the truth of God. So you've got to come in now and assume that there are people who are in your congregation that don't know the truths of God because they don't. And they were not taught the rudiments. They were not taught the, the biblical. Uh, stories of, of, of truth out of scripture. And so the guys were telling us, now people are living longer. When I mentioned a minute ago what Pastor Layla was teaching us, people are living longer in congregations now. Years ago, the average age of a male 20, 30, 40 years ago was about 47 years old. Guys, men and women both Women lived a bit longer, but men were dying off before they reached age 50. Now, men and women are living beyond that into their 80s and 90s. So now you may have five generations. Before, you may have only had two generations. Now you have five generations in a congregation. 
And so we see many congregations and many churches that have a traditional service for the older folks and they have a contemporary service for the younger guys. And we've even had some of that here. Some folks want to go back and sing the Bill Baker stuff. I keep falling in love with him over and over. I know all those. I grew up, I cut my teeth on those. I saw one of my minister of music buddies, minister of music at Westmore Church in Cleveland. He said, he said, he said, I love the old hymns of the church. And he had a, he had a hymn that he had photocopied and put it on Facebook. And the title of the hymn was Quit Your Meanness. <laughs> I said, you know, I've never sang that. Quit Your Meanness. How many has ever sang just build me a cabin in the corner of glory land? Oh, hallelujah. I'm not expecting a cabin. I'm thinking about a mansion. There, there. You see what I'm saying? When we got this kind of thing, well, where are you going with this, Pastor? The systems of the world can tear it over and become systems in the body of Christ if we are careful. If we don't watch out what's going on, we'll get caught up in those things that the world tends to embrace. We're living longer. We're living better. We want it our way. We want it the way we want it. I want to tell you something. Where this preacher is. Okay? I can handle the new stuff. I've gotten way beyond that. Well, they got to, my grandmother used to say, and I knew what her song was. She said, Anytime I, when I had my trio, all of us siblings were singing together, and she'd always say, Sing my song, son. Sing my song. And I knew what her song was. Her song was, He Pilots My Ship. That was her song. If we sang her song, she had had church. If we didn't sing her song, she would come out, well, you didn't sing my song today, son. You know, I moved beyond that a long time ago because I need to be in love with Jesus, not a song. It's good to have a song. It's good to sing a song. You can sing it with music. And as Brother Bud demonstrated this morning, you can sing it without music. With or without. But if it's lifted up in praise to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and you offer it up as an offering to Him, then it finds substance and meaning and have purpose. For while we do it, it's all about worship and help. It's all about giving Him glory and honor and praise. So I don't get caught up in the mechanics of, or the stylistic stuff of what's going on. I can sing, I can sing how great thou art with you, but I can sing I love your presence as well. I can sing dance with me, O lover of my soul. Why? Because we just got it. We're just singing words. It's right out of Song of Solomon. Why would you want to sing the word? All right, I just chased that rabbit for just a minute this morning. But I'm saying, you ought to love what the Holy Spirit loves. Does the Holy Spirit love that? And it's equipping to your spirit. And besides just coming here and singing something that style, you stylistically like or don't like, allow the Holy Spirit to take the lyrics of anything that comes up on that screen and minister it to your heart and say, oh, when, he, when the Holy Spirit says, I don't ever want to be the same again, and he says, what does that mean? Then he, then he quickens that to you and says, I've showed up to change you today. Yeah. Get ready for change. Yeah. Expect the new thing I'm doing. Expect what I'm about to put it in your soul because I'm calling you to a deeper place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to go deeper? Yes. See, some of us get all the time. Brother over here on Sunday, when he gets in the Holy Ghost, and he'll start crying cry out. He'll cry out in Spanish. He's crying out in English. He's crying. What is he crying out for? Some of us look over him. Why is he crying out like that? I don't feel that. 
See, don't, don't make the mistake B.J. Thomas did when he wrote Hooked on the Feeling. <laughs> don't get hooked on the feeling, get hooked on the Holy Ghost. Get hooked on the Holy Ghost. But still guide you into the truth of the Father that you should know. Don't get hooked on the systems of this world, the things, and the pleasure. Don't love this world, the pleasure. Look, last days, men become lovers of pleasure more than they love God. We, we learned, we learned, I learned it years ago, but we've learned it in leadership sessions even more so today. Uh, our competition isn't First Baptist. It isn't the Assemblies of God. It isn't the Presbyterian Church. Our competition is Walmart. The mall. Clearwater Beach. Walt Disney World. People want to be people want to be amused. That's why they call them amusement parks. Pleasure. I want to do. I'm going after that. See, remember. I remember Dr. John Cherry told me in a conference one time. He said, "Did you come to be amused or amazed?" I'm amazed at the things God showed me. I'm amazed. At things the Holy Spirit got us into. He said, if you just want to be amused, he said, amused means when the fun's over, you leave. Right? That's why they call it an amusement park. When the fun's over, you leave. But when you're amazed, you could be amazed for days. You just walk around with the aura of the Holy Spirit about you. And wherever you go, in whatever place you walk into, you change the environment, the atmosphere, the whole room. The whole place, the whole situation turns around. Why? Because when Jesus walked into the synagogue and pulled out the scroll and began to read from Isaiah, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is calling me. The Spirit of the Lord is quickening me. The Spirit of the Lord is anointing me. Because he's called me for a purpose. And my purpose is to speak recovery and sight to the blind. To declare the Lord's favor over them that had no favor before, that were oppressed and bound at the enemy, and to declare that the captive has been set free. Hallelujah, be to the Lamb. My work in the church ever wakes up and discovers who she is and what she's been called to and what she's all about. We'll flip the power of the enemy and the power of darkness in this world and turn it around because the power of God and the grace of God and the love of God is greater and more powerful and mighty than the power of darkness. Hallelujah be to God. Hallelujah be to God. So don't get caught up in the systems of this world. Love and pleasure more than you love the thing. It's okay to have pleasure, but understand what it's there for. It's temporary. People think when they have pleasure, it's supposed to be just repeated on and on and on and on and on. No. It has no eternal value. It has no lasting value. And it appeals to the senses. It appeals to the rest of our flesh. And it can lead us so much into pride. I've been reading a lot about pride this week. Young people, when you get into my Bible class this year, you're going to get into that. We're going to talk about pride. I've been, I've been going deep into pride. Because pride lifts one up to where you look down your nose at others. And you think yourself better than others. And we tend to do that it can be a danger in the body of Christ when people get lifted up in pride. Well, then where am I supposed to live, Pastor? God has called you to live and walk in humility. Yes. Humility is a fruit of the Spirit. It will keep you meek. Remember, meekness is not weak. You'll learn to walk in the humility of the Holy Spirit. So when people want to bless you, you can receive their blessing in the humility of the Holy Spirit. We have a tough time with that in the body of Christ. 
when somebody blesses us, we think we got to turn around and reciprocate. In other words, we think, oh, they did us a favor, they did us a good turn, we got to do them a favor, a good turn. Sometimes you just need to let people bless you because they want to bless you. I've had to learn that as a pastor. People want to bless me, I'm going to let them bless me because the blessing and the favor of the Lord will come upon them because they bless the man of God. Is the scripture for that? When Elijah walked into the widow woman's house and he said, Oh, we're just going to, we're going to bake it. I'm going to bake a cake. All I've got so all I've got is a little cruise of oil and a little flour in the barrel and I'm just going to bake a cake and me and my son are going to lay down and die. And my Lord the prophet makes an unusual request. He says, before you do that, bake me a cake first. <laughs> How many of you would have baked the cake first? You see, most of you know the end of the story. But the story, if you had not known it, you would have looked at that prophet and said, are you out of your mind? How selfish and how arrogant and how prideful are you? But the man of God said, bake me a cake first. Because he knew if she couldn't be drawn away by her disobedience, that she would obey what the man of God said, then favor and blessing would come upon her to the degree that it would not only see her through the famine, but she would be blessed in her house in the place. See, that's what I'm telling you. Don't succumb to the systems of the world. Listen to the voice of the Lord when, as to how the instruction, what the instruction you do. And you'll be blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll look at my clock here. Boom. Out of time. <laughs> As Dr. Cherry used to say, my time is up. I thank you for <laughs> God wants you to go deep. God's calling you to go deep. Hallelujah. Is anybody glad that our two doctors that we prayed for last week are going to recover? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're going to recover. They're going to make a full and complete recovery. As a matter of fact, the husband of Nancy Whitebowl is still over there. He's still right in the middle of it. It's epidemic. Center for Disease Control says it's epidemic. It could spread worldwide. We're going to trust the Lord. We're going to trust the Lord. Unbeknownst to anyone, they gave them a secret they called a serum. I, I, I was in, amazed at hearing how the serum worked. It boosts the immune system so that it attacks the Ebola virus cells and kills them. Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit can do things from the heavens? Amen. He can release things in us. That's why you're not subject to infections like you are now. If your immune system is healthy, it can fight off and ward off infections in and of itself. Why? Because God put that in you. God placed that in you. And if we'll learn to release that, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it'll quicken us even faster and bring about the expected, desired end result. You, you guys believe this stuff? God will do it. Now, what is it you've asked Him for? 
What is it you desire of him? You're not relying on the systems of this world. You're not grumbling and whining and complaining about it. You're found blameless. You want to be a pure heart before him. You take your delight in him when you do those things. He said, no good thing will have to call from you who walk that right before me. Okay? So when he when the Holy Ghost gives you the green light on something, you just move right on into it and have the peace of the Lord. That's why this week I was wondering last week, why am I preaching on peace? I need to be preaching on deeper things about prayer. And the Holy Spirit was trying to say to me, you need to settle down. You need to have peace. You need to have the peace of the Lord. We get way too much out of that stuff over which we have no control. And we need to surround ourselves with people who are like precious faith that we can trust and then release things to them and trust that God will give them the ability. I said to her, I said to Madam yesterday, I trust Pastor Steve. I've worked with him. He's a man of God. I, I've been there for all these years. I, I can do it. I've gone through it. I'm 63 years into this. Fixed to be 64 next month. And I've, I've gone through some. I've cleaned carpets. I've painted walls. I've roofed church buildings. All these buildings you see here on campus, I painted every one of them. Wasn't there's not a building on this campus I didn't paint. I've laid carpet. I've pulled up carpet. I've laid blocks. I've done roofing. I've pulled electrical wire. I've installed sound systems. I've installed lighting systems. We installed this whole lighting system. All the sound systems. You know why we did it? Because we wanted to bless the house of the Lord. We saved $17,000 in labor just doing it ourselves. Hello, somebody. There's yet more that we want to do. But yet, the peace of the God's teaching is to settle down and have his peace about things. Is that okay? Hallelujah. Now I've got to let you go because people got leaving on the line. That's an old rusty goodness song. Lately all I've got is leaving on my mind. That's okay. You gotta go. No, you gotta go. Sometimes the preacher, the preacher can bore you, but somehow the movie interests you. Oh, help me! All right. Settle down and enjoy the peace of God, and stop getting hung up in the systems of this world and things. Don't love it. Don't love those things. All right. Bradley, come here quick. That's not quick. It's not quick. So you're fixing the air. Yeah. You're fixing to go to the university. If you don't move quicker than that, you'll be left in the dust. <laughs> Those people move. She looks like you're getting taller. You're feeling that a little more. You're going to work that out. No? You got the pipes and the guns. You got the. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Is it four or six pipes? Huh? Eight. <laughs> it's an eight pack. Look at it. Uh, Brother Bud. Brother Bud's gone. Give me some oil. Give me some oil. Uh, this young man's leaving for Lee University. I think Thursday. Is he leaving Thursday? You got some, Ellen? Okay, good. He's right there behind. He's leaving for Lee. It's next Thursday? This Thursday. Next Thursday. This Thursday. 
He's leaving in Florida. So he's leaving and he's going to the university. He's in pursuit. He doesn't know yet. Most of the time we know, I didn't know what I was majoring in for my junior year. So anyway, your first two years, you got to get all these courses out of the way anyway. So he's got a lot to do. He's got plenty to do. But where he's going into is the university is a university where God is calling young men and women who be raised to have to be champions for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just praise the Lord for that. He's been accepted there. He's already got his room assigned, his roommate. And next week he'll be getting class schedules, and then he'll two or three days later be getting class. And we're just going to send him off with the anointing of the Lord. We want to send him off with the blessing and the favor of the Lord upon his life. And that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide him into all truth. That he will he will bless him and lift up his countenance and cause him to be the overcoming victorious Christian that God has destined him to be. Alright, so if those of you that want to come lay hands on him, we're going to anoint him with the oil of the Holy Ghost. And we're just going to release him today to do and be all God's called him to be. Everybody can come on, those of you that need to that need to go, but we're just going to take a minute to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. How wonderful. How wonderful you are. How great you are. How glorious you are. Father, I'm amazed that we are at this point today. I would call this moment a miraculous thing. When we have seen where you have brought Bradley from to where he could have been. Uh, that the enemy's assignment, the enemy's assignment was defeat and destruction. But God said, I have other plans. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. I've not called you to harm or to destruction, but I've called you to overcoming power and might. I've called you to fulfill my purpose. I've called you to a destiny. I've called you for it even when I knew you were formed in your mother's womb. Even before then, I placed my call upon your lap. And now it is beginning to unfold in an even greater, more rapid dimension. You will see it, you shall know it, for it is ordained of the Lord that those who have prayed over you and released the word of God, you have seen, you have seen visions. You have seen visions that indicate the destiny to which God has opened up and prepared for you. This is not a way that you will have to go through and open doors. God will open the doors and has opened the doors. All you must do is be obedient to walk through them. To apply yourself. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. For you will know the truth, and the truth will continue to keep and set you free and you will walk in its freedom as you open yourselves up obediently to its truth. The word of the Lord dwells in you richly. So you are equipped with the tools that you need. The word, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and the love of the Father and Son. All you need you will find in Jesus, for you are complete in Him. Look to Him. He has offered your faith, and He will bring it to its completion. So you will continue to learn, you will continue to grow, you will continue to flourish, and even in the midst of things that seem to be struggle, don't fear them, for it is God's way of maturing you. Step into it. Receive it. Embrace it. 
Yes, even learn to rest in it. And you will have the peace of God that will keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. And you will fulfill the destiny to which he has called you. For I decree and declare today, it is one that is higher than you have even imagined. It is one greater than you could ever think possible. But God has lifted you up and God has set you forth and God has called you. And it is God who will complete the assignment to which you have been given. So go forth with power. Go forth with anointing. Go forth with blessing. And go forth with favor. Stand strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Do not fulfill the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, but the pride of life. Do not lean to your own understanding, but always know that it is not by might nor by power, but it is by my spirit, declares the Lord of hosts. For he watches over his word, and he will also perform it and bring it to pass. So it is with great expectation, it is with great honor that we send you forth from this place, from this house, to fulfill the declaration of the Lord. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you will prosper. All those who rise up against you will fall. You need not fear what the enemy may bring you if he seeks to do you harm, because you are a servant of the Most High God. You are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. So it is in the strong name of Jesus that we bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want y'all to give me a host of young people in here next week. We're gonna be we're gonna be praying all over the people next week. Y'all come prayed up, ready to go and do what God ordained us to do. We're gonna be all right, we're done. If y'all got these on your mind, we'll let you go. We'll see you. We love you. Thank <laughs> you.